I've tried so many things and what many would call failed at it. Now I say what many would call a failure because I believe that all of my successes today are because I failed at something in the past and I pulled the best lesson out. And so I feel like I'm so qualified. I'm so qualified to talk about this. Um, I tried writing for years and I received a fail in writing and was told I was the weakest writer I'd ever met in my teacher's life. I, 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 I then went to speaking and my teacher told me, Miss Nichols, I recommend you never speak in public, that you get a desk job. <laughs> I failed at speaking. I went into accounting and I was in the collections department and my supervisor called me in and said, Miss Nichols, what do you want to be when you grow up? What career do you want to get into? And I thought she was testing my commitment to the company. I said, I want to be the manager of the collection department. And I saw her cringe and she went on to tell me, you're not really good at this. This isn't that thing for you. I have to release you to find your dream. <laughs> I went on and I worked in interior design and the biggest thing that I got out of that was the ability to put some colors together, but I got fired from the job. I was fired five different times in my twenties. <laughs> I, I thought that was normal until I began to tell people and I saw them look at me weird. So I failed at so many things, but I, I pulled the lessons out. So I'd love to share with you the top three tips that I have for dealing with failure. Number one, give yourself a thousand second chances. I, I really want you to get this. Give yourself a thousand second chances. And every time, say every time, every time you get to 999, press reset. Give yourself a thousand second chances. Realize that you got a thousand times to figure out how to get it right. Life is about practicing and replaying and practicing and replaying. Life is not about perfection. The moment you pursue perfection versus progress, you suck all the joy out of your moments. You suck all the joy out of a win. Have you ever been around someone or have you been that person where you did something amazing, but all you can see was that little 4% that you didn't do so well? You discount the other 96% because of the 4%? You get a hundred people saying you did something amazing and four people didn't like it and you forget about the 100 and you breathe life into the four, all of a sudden you stop giving yourself the grace that you give others. Give yourself a thousand second chances to get it right. And then don't ever think about right, just think about better. I think one of the best things I've done for me is I say, oh Lisa, this year, whoo, you're going to do better than you did last year. I never say I'm going to do it perfect. I'm just, I just say I'm going to do it better. When my son Jelani, every year on his birthday, I wish he were standing right here next to me because he'd tell you he can finish this sentence. I drove him crazy. Every year on his birthday, I'd say, happy birthday, Jelani. Now remember, it's mommy's first time having a 10-year-old. Happy birthday, Jelani. Now remember, it's mommy's first time being the parent of a 13-year-old. Happy birthday, Jelani. Now remember, it's mommy's first time parenting a 15 year old. And I would do it every year and he go, yeah, yeah, mom. Okay, I know. And then when he turned 18 years old, he was 18 and I don't know what I did, but I did something really stupid. And I was, I was feeling really bad. And I just, I was in my room. I was sad. I made a poor decision, snapped at him or just discounted what he was saying. And I didn't quite know how to make my way back to him. And I remember Jelani, 18 years old, 6'2", walk in my room and he says, Mom, it's okay. I know it's your first time having an 18 year old. <laughs> Man, all those years of asking for grace came back and served me in that moment. So number one, give yourself a thousand second chances. And every time you get to 999, do what? Put your finger in the air, point it to the side, boop, reset. You have a thousand more. Number two, don't keep score. See, keeping score is collecting evidence on why something won't work. Collecting evidence of why someone's going to fail you. Collecting evidence of why something isn't good. So don't keep score while keeping track. Now, keeping track is taking note of the directions that served you 
and taking note of the directions that didn't serve you so much. So keep track, not score. Score is showing up and looking for evidence of why something won't work. Keeping track is making sure you understand what steps gave you the return on your investment that you wanted and what steps didn't. So don't keep score, keep track. That's number two. And number three, recognize that when you fail at something, the power does not lie in what knocked you down. So quit telling the story of what knocked you down. Quit posting it on Instagram, on Facebook, telling your girlfriends, telling your guy friends. Quit rehashing the story because energy grows where energy goes. Number three, the power lies in getting back up. So don't keep regurgitating the story of what knocked you down. Begin to focus on what's gonna get you up. When I look at someone who I'm gonna bank all my energy on, I'm gonna give my last dime to, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bank on this person and bet on this person, I'm gonna bet on the person that's more committed to what got them up and what will keep getting them up than giving the power and talking about and breathing life into what knocked them down. So please, my friend, choose where you spend your time in conversation and energy and in thoughts. So to recap, what do you do when you failed? One, you give yourself a thousand second chances. Two, you don't keep score, you keep track. And three, you recognize that the power lies in getting back up. <laughs> That's at least what I remember. Now, no, that this show is not a monologue. I am not interested in talking to you only. I love hearing your voice via text, type, and video. I love the fact that this is a dialogue. This is a delicious, dynamic conversation. This is a courageous conversation between a community of conscious folk. I would love to hear from you. What was your biggest aha from this lesson? In what ways have you been knocking yourself down? In what ways have you been afraid to fail? In what ways have you allowed a past experience to hold you back from leaping again? What did you make failure mean? How has a past failure robbed you of a present or future experience or desire? Ooh wee, that's a whole nother lesson. So I wanna hear from you. Please let me know, comment below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. Why haven't you subscribed if you haven't subscribed already? What are you thinking of? You know you like it here just as much as I like you being here. Please look out for more amazing content in the future. After all, we're in this together. This is your home. We are your tribe. And I, I am your sister in prosperity and in possibility. And every single time you hear me say, I believe in you and I love you, it's because I do. I'll see you real soon.